everybody. It's Melissa Swader here with Real Talk, Real Business, Real People. And I am so excited to be in the studio again. Um, it has been a several month hiatus here in Arizona, but I'm excited to be back in the studio with my special guest, Jamie Pope, all the way from Nashville, Tennessee. It is really exciting to have you in the studio today. So welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here, Melissa. We have some exciting information to talk about right now because y'all in commercial real estate, you guys are the ones that are going to be loving this podcast more than anyone because it's about taxes. (laughs) (laughs) Our favorite word right in the industry right now. So We're going to dive into a few things that you have coming up. Um, You know, one, you are a national, uh, nationally recognized uh, presenter, um, you know, regarding, he works with title companies, work with commercial real estate brokerages, you present different types of, a variety of different subject topics, but we're gonna get down to the one that's coming up on February 9th. And uh, let's just dive right into it. All right. Thank you. All right. So let's just, for those who don't know Jamie Pope, let's just talk a little bit about what you do, like what, so people get to know you a little bit better. Sure. Uh, My primary focus is I do tax consulting, uh, both uh, for individuals, primarily high net worth individuals, but quite a few that own significant amounts of commercial real estate. I also do quite a bit of work with financial institutions, as well as commercial real estate brokerage. And we approach tax from the standpoint that it's not a one-size-fits-all solution to anything. In fact, one-size-fits-all never fits anybody very well. (laughs) But the uh, tax code is a phenomenal way to help you sell more commercial real estate. There truly is a tax life cycle in real estate, and you can put that to work to your advantage. And we're going to share some ideas today, uh, get you started mm-hmm. down that road to help you sell more commercial real estate. You hear by that, y'all? The tax code. <laughs> sell more commercial real estate. Let me write that. <laughs> sell more commercial real estate. I'm going to put that right there in the header, y'all, because I know that's what we're. This is what we're talking about, right? The uh, a lot of the misconception too is not just not understanding some of the tax incentives, and you know cap. Capital gains. We're all we've all been talking about this, especially on LinkedIn. It's been a very big topic. Uh, the ten thirty one exchanges, right? Absolutely. So let's talk about what's coming up in your webinar on February 9th. Now you are going to be presenting to. I mean, we're not talking. You know, sometimes ten people. We're talking four hundred to, you know, six hundred people who are listening in to his presentations. Uh, again, nationally recognized. He is tr- basically on a travel tour right now. I think <laughs> you know he's just visiting all these places and you know being able to talk about what you're doing and working with his clients and and right right absolutely yeah you know it's easy at the airport these days i'll tell you it really is uh so the topic that we're going to have a webinar on the uh ninth and then we'll be subsequently doing some others as well uh is going to be uh taxes after the 2020 election 2021 and beyond and quite frankly, uh, this was a watershed election. Many people expected a split government, meaning not a lot would change in Washington. But that's all out the window now. Uh, and primarily, I believe what everybody needs to focus on is this. Uh, there's a lot of talk about potential tax changes now. And you can get caught up all day having those conversations. <laughs> but potential probable and actual passing are entirely different animals. So let's just remember this. Uh, A lot of things are proposed, thrown around. You can waste a lot of time uh, getting down in the weeds on ideas that may never come to pass. But let's stay open-minded. We're going to talk about some of the potential changes on the webinar because uh, some of them we know are probably going to be proposed. We'll see if they're passed. But more importantly, we're really going to focus in on what we do know. The most important tax filing year always is the one before you. And right now, that's the 2020 tax year. We know what's in the tax code for 2020 taxes, and there are many advantages there that commercial real estate brokers need to take advantage of because these are temporary benefits that will expire at the end of the 2020 filing season. So, yes. So uh, just to interject here, there is a deadline here. I remember you saying that. So what what is the upcoming deadline? When do the people need to start acting on this? This For their tax season right now, they need to file for some of these incentives. Let's talk about the 
Um, let's talk about the employee retention. We had talked a little bit about that prior to, you know, our podcast studio here. And I am amazed at some of the incentives that employers, small business owners can get back on that return, some of these returns for, per employee. So let's talk about this a little bit, because I think there's a lot of people who may not know about this. Absolutely. Uh, the CARES Act 1.0 and 2.0 both were, excuse me, both were identified <laughs> as, as exactly. Sorry about that. See someone calling already from our podcast <laughs> See, going, Jamie, how do I sell more commercial real exactly. estate using the tax code? That was a sign from the heavens above, I think. Absolutely. Uh, so <laughs> feel free to call at any time. You know my phone is on. <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, but the CARES Act, both 1.0 and 2.0, were designed to push money out into the economy and help those who needed uh, relief. Uh, there were several different parts of that. There was some uh, taxpayer relief. There were different incentives. People got uh, checks in the mail. But on the business side, the CARES Act uh, also had provisions to help employers keep people employed by giving them money to actually pay their employees. Mm -hmm. The payroll protection program is the most popular. And virtually everybody took a triple PPP, P PPP. Y'all saw that all over headlines. PPP. Yes, Just in case you didn't know. Yes, and we have PPP2 coming up. Uh, that's a whole different webinar we'll be having about the middle of the month. It's very important. But what happened was that there was another benefit to incentivize folks to keep people on the payroll. That was the employee retention credit. Now, CARES Act 1.0, uh, it was in part of that legislation, but it said if you took triple P money, you weren't eligible for the other credit. Well, CARES Act 2.0 passed at the end of last December, uh, changed that. It said if you took P triple P you are not ineligible to take the credit. It made the credit more robust for 20 and 2021, but more importantly, it made it uh, opened up the field for those who may qualify. It's not a slam dunk. There's a lot of rules. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them require interpretations uh, by tax attorneys and CPAs, very qualified in this area. But the bottom line is this. Employers may receive up to a $19,000 refundable tax credit, not a deduction, but a credit. That's a dollar-for-dollar dollar offset against your taxes. Mm -hmm. When it's refundable, that means you can get the tax per, money per, back. Per employee. Per employee, yeah. yes. So a great example. Uh, one of my uh, clients, uh, CPA, referred one of his folks to me. They're a contractor. They have 55 employees. They were affected by COVID shutdowns. They were open most of the time, but they had... Uh, material delays, labor delays, actual shutdowns in some of the areas on their jobs. Anyway, he's going to have 55 employees that he's going to be eligible for 5000 from last year already. And it looks like he's going to be eligible in both quarters this year, quarter one, quarter two, which is 7000 So 19000 times 55, this contractor has almost, <laughs> wow. in fact, has a little over a million dollars potentially in tax refunds coming. That's, let me repeat yeah, that again. I know, a million I say, dollars that. of tax refunds coming. Now, it's going to take some special work to get him qualified. This isn't just a cut and dry program, but our tax attorneys and CPAs feel confident they're going to be able to uh, form a basis, a legal opinion, where he'll be able to receive these. So I encourage everyone right. to look into this and reach out because that's serious money. A 10-person company could be eligible for up to $190,000. I mean, talk to your CPA, right? Yes. I mean, this is... Uh, CPAs many times, uh, they do a great job. I work with CPAs every day, but this is not necessarily cut and dry. Parts of it are, but other parts are not, and they're going to mm -hmm. require legal opinions from experts to be formed and then defended in case you're ever audited. So I tell people it's a slam dunk, but it's not necessarily something your CPA may or may not be comfortable offering an opinion on. What is, what is the one thing that... I mean, if you all have any questions, I know this is a lot to take in. Believe me, when I heard it the first few times, it's still a lot to absorb because all these numbers are running through your head, right? Especially when you're not, you know, you're not in the numbers game in terms of your taxes. But it, what is, the, moving forward, what is the one thing that you feel like you specialize in most? I mean, you, 
and trust me, he does so many. Check out his website. Before I forget, check out his website, jamiepope.com. You go to the resources pages and you can see all the different types of services that you offer. But what is something that you really, that hone in on? What are, what are most people reach out for you for? In the realm of commercial real estate, the number one thing I do is I help brokers identify potential tax benefits in a project before the sale. Uh, because of uh, benefits in the tax code as a result of the 2017 Tax Cuts and Job Act, uh, you may be able to identify between 8 and 10 percent of the purchase price of a property available in immediate tax savings. And so what I do with folks I work with is I do a no-cost benefit analysis on every one of the projects that you may bring to me. With that, I help identify mm -hmm. some of the benefits that you may have. You can use that to uh, for your sales presentation. It's in a nice PDF. Melissa does a great job designing those for us. And absolutely, if you have any design work, <laughs> call Melissa. I got my endorsement for the day. Absolutely, Thank you, yes. Jamie call Pope. Melissa. <laughs> uh, but seriously, this is a great sales tool. So you've got three. You've been tasked to find a particular type of property, and you find three properties A, B, and C. And you approach your client, and say, "Here's A, here's B, and here's C." But I want to tell you, C potentially has one. $1.3 million of tax benefits available on the front end. Which project do you think they want to talk about? Mm -hmm. Or if you're competing against other brokers, which story do they want to hear? They want to hear about the one with those tax benefits first. So that's one of the most important things I do for commercial brokers is identify potential tax benefits on the front end to help you in the sales process. There's no charge for those upfront benefit analysis. And I'm always available to answer questions for clients. I'll tell you right off the bat, mm -hmm. something you probably don't want to explain. Have them call me. That's how we work together. But increase your sales by using the tax code. Do you feel, Do you feel? you know, with how many commercial real estate, you know, advisors there are across the country? I mean, do you feel like there's a big number of people that do not take advantage of of the tax, who actually look into this type of thing for their clients? Uh, the vast majority do not. I can tell you who uh, the most frequent, uh, the people who request my service on this particular program the most are the guys in the corner's office selling the most commercial real estate. It's the guy who's selling 25 hotel properties a year. It's the gal that- You hear that? Yeah, the gal that's selling 15 commercial properties a year. It's the ones who are selling the most that request from me the most often. And uh, we think that obviously there's a reason why they're probably selling the most properties because they're using him to find out whether or not you're saving your clients some money, right? Absolutely. I mean, it works all in the same. It's kind of like the domino effect. I mean, you know, when you're working with outside vendors and partners in, you know, in a collaboration effort for one, you know, particular objective, and that is to sell more commercial real estate property, then please take advantage of Jamie Pope and his services. You know, we, we definitely, you know, appreciate, you know, having the vendors, having the resources, you know, in, in commercial real estate. You know, I, I run a women in commercial real estate Facebook group. Shout out ladies. Hey y'all. Um, you know, I'm sending my love to you. Um, you know, <laughs> so is Jamie, see? And, um, you know, we always are looking for best practices and ways to, you know, maximize the potential to sell property. And we learn all from each other too. So I think this is a really great opportunity for them to learn a little bit today. You know, I'll be posting everybody. And make sure you guys check out my YouTube. Make sure you guys subscribe to my YouTube channel, Melissa Swader, Real Talk, Real Business. Can't miss it. And uh, always on Facebook, Melissa Swader AZ. And uh, I'm really excited because Jamie actually has a new LinkedIn page. So make sure you check out JP. Pope Tax Consultancy, as well as Facebook. So there's a lot of really great information on his social media pages. You're going to see a lot of, um, you know, upcoming posts just about his presentations, his webinars. Right now we're in obviously tax season, so busy time for, for you. And always throughout the year when you think about um, your no-cost you know, benefit analysis. I think that's pretty important as well. Um, what do you think, you know, moving on to the, you know, 20, 2021, right? We're back in, you know, business is starting to pick up a little bit. 
what do you say how, what do you think the real estate market's going to look like for you just based on your own experience working with these brokers well, I talk to brokers on a regular basis, daily, numerous brokers. Mm -hmm. And what I'm seeing is that in the space uh, of multifamily, that's still attracting quite a bit of capital, uh, industrial as well. But well-written, uh, under, well underwritten multifamily continues to be probably the safest and best investment in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's still attracting capital. Those projects are still going forward. Industrial properties are red hot right now, as most people know. Yes. Uh, retail, uh, there'll probably be more new retail openings than you realize because you've got a lot of net lease, Dollar General yes. store, Family Dollar. Dollar General is the number one new retail opening location. I think there were 982 Dollar General stores. We have a lot of them here in Arizona, y'all. So, so you're going to see a lot of that triple net in those particular specialized spaces. Uh, overall, I do a lot of work with Opportunity Zone dollars, and, yes. and that was a topic that was really hot, slowed down once COVID set in. But there's some great new features to the Opportunity Zones, and we're going to see some more money to be able uh, to, f that can be deployed out of an Opportunity Zone in some very unique and special ways that I believe is going to help underwrite quite a bit of capital projects. Uh, I had two conferences yesterday in Los Angeles with uh, parties that are raising money for new projects, and we were able to possibly tap some Opportunity Zone mo fund money to help them, and neither of those projects were in an Opportunity Zone. A lot of unique things going on. Be creative, be adaptive, take advantage, mm -hmm. be strategic in everything that you consider, and remember taxes. Yeah, so for those who, because right, you, you know, he talked a little bit about Opportunity Zone, and there's a lot of commercial Real, there's a lot of new commercial real estate advisors. A lot of you out there are making the transition from residential to commercial. You know, I really love to see that because you know it's a it's a personal growth. It's a it's a per professional growth. You know that they're challenging themselves to get into a different you know type of real estate. So for those who may not be familiar with the Opportunity Zone, can you just talk a little bit about what that actually is for the people who may not understand it completely? Absolutely. And I have several recordings. We'll put some up on the uh, YouTube site. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done about 350 presentations on the Get Opportunity that. Zones. 350 presentations. He's big time VIP <laughs> in the studio. I wasn't kidding. All the way from Nashville. Uh, my first one I did about a month and a half after the tax bill was passed, and it was for the Hispanic Chamber in Tucson, and so a lot of experience with this, but the most important thing to remember about an opportunity zone, uh, it is a way to help develop businesses and needed real estate in distressed communities. The whole idea behind this bill, wide bipartisan support, is put money to work in distressed communities. Mm -hmm. Government on every level has tried many programs. So the idea with this was let's give private enterprise an opportunity to help these communities. So special rules were set up that will drive investment dollars into these areas, a lot of tax incentives. The big headline incentive is that if you perform or invest in an Opportunity Zone project, hold it at least 10 years, follow all the rules, 100% of your gains when you do sell will be totally tax-free. Tax totally tax-free. There are a lot of benefits for taxes along the way as well. And so yeah. I would encourage everyone, uh, watch one of the webinars. Uh, there's a lot of intricacies to these type of yeah. programs, but there are big advantages here. It's a chance to uh, do good and do well at the same time. Right. And, you know, every commercial real estate advisor should be checking, obviously, to you know, if you're ever, you know, listing a property to see if it's located in the proper, you know, in the opportunity zone, because that's going to be valuable information, especially, to, you know, for your client as well. So you can, you know, you can, again, reach out to Jamie. If you have any questions on the opportunity zone, he's worked on it 335 wrap that up in your head as much as the other million dollars that we were talking about in incentives. These are the numbers that you have to remember in terms of why he is great at what he does. He is America's tax expert, mm -hmm. and I am so excited to have you in here. I think we'll kind of maybe just wrap up. Talk about talk about capital gains because I know, or sure. the 10, 1031 exchanges more importantly, because I think, you know, they're 
you know, over, and I'm not going to get into politics because, you know, I don't like politics. I don't even like talking about politics. But because the last several months have been about the election and what's going to happen with the 1031 exchanges, are we going to have them? Are they going to disappear? What is how it's going to affect the commercial you know, real estate industry. So let's talk about the advantages or what will happen if we no longer have them. Absolutely. That's a great point to bring up. The number one topic for most commercial real estate people that I hear uh, revolves around the 1031 exchange. That's a way to sell properties and defer the taxes on those and eventually perhaps defer them all the way to your death. You receive a full step up in basis. Your heirs receive all that money tax free in America grant. <laughs> And so that's the Woo. basis of many sales transactions in real estate for years. Uh, the 1031 exchange has been around a long time. Uh, in the 2017 Tax Cuts and Job Act, it barely survived then. Listen to this carefully. <laughs> barely survived. And this was a Republican Party written bill. Uh, we were in Washington. My uh, strategic partner I do much of my work with, uh, Julio Gonzalez, CEO of Engineer Tax Services, uh, was very instrumental in the lobbying on behalf of this bill. And we were in Washington, and it, 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 it barely survived. Now, it's been widely disseminated, the Biden tax plan proposal that his campaign released. Uh, just remember, proposals and actual law are different. Regardless, yeah. I'm like Melissa, forget politics, but regardless of which party's in charge, the people who really write the tax legislation and get it passed are the lobbyists Lobbyist. and special <laughs> interest, okay? The real estate industry has a huge lobby and a huge special interest. But people are afraid the 1031 exchange will go away. The second biggest uh, issue is that if you hold an asset for more than a year, you're eligible to claim the capital gains tax rate, which for many decades now has been significantly lower than the ordinary income tax rate, which they take out of your paycheck. The reason for that is to incentivize people to save and invest money. Investment capital mm -hmm. is the mother's milk of prosperity. So we incentivize that. Mother's it's been proposed that, yes, it's been <laughs> proposed that the Biden administration has, has said that they want to remove the incentive for capital gains tax rates so that if you sell something, it's all taxed at the ordinary income rate. What that means, and put that in perspective, yeah. is that in the state of California, you would pay 55% of any gain that you have in taxes today. So if you made a dollar, you would only keep 45 cents. That's significantly less dollars for you to reinvest in new projects. What always happens is people quit selling assets, period. The third is it's been proposed to lose the step up in basis when someone dies and passes on to the heirs. Uh, that basically means that, you know, if you inherit a house from your parents in a high tax state or high property value state like California, you're probably going to have to pay taxes on it. That's, that's, those are all things that have been proposed. But the important thing to remember is we have some phenomenal benefits now in 2020. Mm -hmm. Remember this. The calendar year 2020 is gone. The tax year 2020 is still open. So there's every possibility yeah. a tax bill may be passed and made retroactive to January 1, 2021. We're going to be disseminating a lot of information. We're going to stay on top of this. But please, don't get too caught up in what may happen. Let's focus on what we have today. Use the tools now at our disposal mm -hmm. and use those. Let's not stay paralyzed and hide under our desk. Uh, we have to get out and produce on a daily basis as salespeople. And quite frankly, we're all professionals. But if you're in the commercial real estate mm -hmm. world, you are a salesperson, just like, in essence, everybody in America is a salesperson. So right. let's be proactive. Use what we have. Exactly. There you have it. <laughs> that, that was the short version. But believe me. If you guys, honestly, if you guys need any, any information, any just, just gen, general questions on, you know, what he can do, how he can help you to help your clients, you know, please reach out to jamiepope.com. Uh, you can get his email information there, his, you know, his phone number's right there on the home page. You know, he's written some blogs on there. You can read a little bit about all the stuff that you do, all the services that you provide. Um, beyond probably what's on the website there's so much more to talk about that that could be another two podcasts you know moving forward when he comes back into our lovely state of arizona hopefully and march 1st 
Oh, yeah, that's we right. We have a webinar yes. March 1st. Mar uh, March 1st. Conjunction with Commonwealth Thailand, we'll be getting information out to you. That's one of my strategic partners so is Commonwealth Title Group. See, another, so I told you earlier in the podcast, you worked with title companies, many, many title companies that you've worked with um, in regards to the CPE credits and CE credits that are out there for you. So if you need them, make sure you tune into his uh, Facebook and his LinkedIn pages. Um, we will definitely get something up on the website and and uh, make sure you guys tune in. So if you have one final thought to say to everybody out there regarding taxes. Here's what I would say. One thing. One thing. Okay, maybe one Limit, long thing. Okay. Limit your time that you stay consumed in current media via either internet or television to no more than a few minutes a day. It's so easy to get caught up in all the negatives and hear so many proposals that all of a sudden it all runs together and you go, why do I need to think about taxes? It's all going to change. Limit your time, please. Let's stay focused. No matter what happens mm -hmm. in any type of tax bill or any bill that's passed, we have to wake up tomorrow morning and figure out a way to make a dollar. So let's stay sharp, let's stay focused, let's stay committed to what it is we do best. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I am so happy to have you in the studio today. I hope you guys have learned so much. Um, you know, if you didn't know a little bit, maybe you learned a little bit more after listening to Jamie talk about some of these, you know, areas of taxes, you know, from capital gains, 1031 to the PPA, to employee uh, retention uh, incentives. And uh, I think we pretty much covered a lot of things, in fact, today. So um, I will be, be sure to be posting this to YouTube here in the next week or so. So make sure you all tune in. And, you know, this is Melissa again here inside the studio with Real Talk, Real Business and Real People. Always keeping it real inside the studio. Keep it real out there, everybody. And always make that money. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Woohoo!